Hello my dear friends, welcome to Aspire Critical and today we are discussing uh, another uh, important case from which we can learn a lot. So this is the case uh, which I treated and uh, uh, I wanted to share some important things which uh, we all do at the beginning and uh, the important thing is you improve on your work because in long term good work really helps us. So this case you can see that there is a big lesion in the in the distal root of the first molar and this is probably the reason why patient is having a lot of symptom. Now as I said that every tooth is important and if you plan to save it we really have to assess the case before promising anything to the patient. So looking at this case uh, if this would have done uh, properly in uh, first attempt things could have been different. Many people believe that uh, to do a good case you require a lot of equ expensive equipment or maybe when you look at the social media we all believe that maybe we if we had that uh, uh, equipment or instrument we could have done it better. Yes there are there are definitely some better instruments better equipments but it is not that you cannot do good quality endo uh, with whatever instruments uh, which are affordable, which are within your reach even today. So this case, first issue is uh, both the crowns are joined, they are splinted, many people practice it and uh, they don't find a big problem with it. This basically happens for two reasons, one is because you may plan to give two separate crowns but unfortunately your lab doesn't have such a good capacity to give you two separate crowns which when if you place uh, you can end up getting a good contact. Fortunately now more and more computerized crowns are within reach of a dentist and I'm sure that issue should not be there. The second reason is you yourself do not value uh, giving two separate crowns. Now of course it may appear very uh, simple and you may, know, you may realize that there is not much of a difference if you give it two separate crowns or two, two joint crowns but in long term uh, there are multiple problems. One, if one case fails, suppose one tooth fails, you will have to remove both the crowns in order to treat the one single crown. So that is a major problem and second is obviously uh, you know maintenance in a splinted crown is really difficult because you have basically closed the physiological space and the mobility of tooth is uh, actually restricted. So whenever possible do give uh, separate crowns. Uh, I know in very very rare cases where when the height is not there people tend to give a splinted crowns but there is also an option of crown lending and if patient agrees you can get a crown lending done and plan to give two separate crowns. Second uh, important thing you will realize in this x-ray is that there is core buildup is missing. Now maybe the earlier dentist has given the core buildup and it may have dissolved over a period of time and that is why core buildup has to be a good material which, which will not dissolve uh, if there is a leakage. Because uh, one of the very important line which you will read in the textbook of endodontics is that you may have done a poor endo but if you have done a very good core weight up material then the success is definitely better in contrast to cases where you may have done an excellent endo and uh, if the core build up is bad. So uh, the core build up is definitely missing here and uh, that also uh, you know we, we have to make sure that whenever do, we do case we should be doing a good core build up material. If you look at the canals uh, of uh, this tooth, you will find that uh, it looks like a hand instrument. It is short. Even in 7 you can see that uh, it is a 2% core and uh, there is a lot of space. Can the tooth not succeed by 2% instrumentation? It is not true. People have done it for many years. Cases do succeed if you have done very good cleaning and shaping with even 2% instrument. But the principles of uh, the endodontics should be followed. All those principles like matching working length, working width, cleaning and shaping. If you do that with hand instrument, you can still succeed. But with rotary, definitely you can treat the curved canals better. 
compared to a stainless steel because if you want to enlarge maybe a 30 number in an extreme curvature, the stainless steel will not bend so easily. But uh, night eye will definitely bend better. And of course, uh, the next thing is you have a very big lesion here. Okay, so whenever you have such a big lesion, you should always make sure that you should also check for vertical root fracture, which sometimes is also associated with a deep narrow pocket, which is a classic sign of uh, any endoperio lesion or even vertical tooth fracture. So you can always advise a CBCT along with a clinical examination to check whether there is uh, vertical root fracture because in uh, normal x-rays it may not be always seen but with CBCT and this uh, big radiolucency you can you can sometimes suspect that there can be a vertical root fracture. So how do you treat this? Treat is definitely you know this is a very young patient I would like to definitely uh, remove the crowns okay that is the first important thing and many times what happens is because the patient is not ready uh, you know sometimes to uh, agree that they don't want to remove the impacted third molar we end up giving a crown uh, which may not have reached the margin and there is a foot lodgement which happens between the tooth number seven and eight and uh, from here the decay starts so whenever possible, try to give crown margin in an accessible area which is self-cleansable so that patient can maintain it. So the treatment was done like this. I removed the crowns okay, and uh, accessed the canals. I had kept calcium hydroxide for almost 15-20 uh, days. And eventually uh, I obturated. Some mesial one was 4% uh, 30. But the other canal was merging. The distal one was somewhere around 4% 40 here and this is a lateral obturation. So can you do a good case with lateral obturation? Yes, lateral obturation is better than doing a single cone obturation. But nowadays you have advances like you can even do single cone obturation with bioceramic sealer or you can do thermoplastic obturation also. So always remember is that when you do more and more, uh, when you put uh, the normal sealer you would like to have less sealer and more GP because if there is a leakage, the sealer will uh, dissolve first. But in, in when it comes to bioceramic sealers, where uh, you do a single cone with bioceramic sealer, the important thing to realize here is bioceramic sealer is not actually a sealer. It, it is actually obturating material. It is going to set very hard. And the GP which is placed inside, it, it does serve a purpose as for retreatment. So it is as good as you are having a, a large uh, sealer obturation. Uh, which is a bioceramic material and then there is a GP. So that is the concept when you speak for bioceramic uh, uh, single cone obturation. So then I have ended up giving two separate crowns. Um, we got the third molar extracted and uh, I don't have that image here. Maybe in another case I will discuss it. So that's it. If you have any doubts, you can uh, message in the comment section and I will be happy to uh, answer. Bye.